always preach on Sunday night. But tonight, I'm going to bring you a thought that the Lord put on my heart. Take your Bible, turn to the book of Acts, chapter 15. This is going to be really short, so you got to listen fast. Acts, chapter 15. And it's honest to goodness, it's been on my heart two weeks. And uh, so I'm going to talk to you tonight about this. What to do about when you don't like somebody. It's worse than I thought. Worse than I thought. Is there it? No. I'm not going to do Lord, no. When you don't like somebody, what do you do about it? Well, what's a Christian to do? Now, I'm going to try to help you with that tonight. And I'll, don't sit there and act all self-righteous like you're the great one and, and you got hard feelings in your heart toward somebody. Some of people you just don't like. You just don't like them. That's right. There's one of them right there. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. I like DJ. Acts chapter 15. It ain't no wonder we can't have no revival or camp meeting. You got to be in one mind, one accord, y'all. Good night. Paul, verse 35. Also, and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas was preaching buddies. Continued in Antioch. Teaching and preaching the word of the Lord. With many others also. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Paul was, I guess he might be considered maybe the leader, maybe a little bit, I don't know. Let us go again, visit our brethren in every city which we preach the word of the Lord, see how they do. Now, look at verse 37. Determined to take with them John, who, but Paul thought it thought not good to take him with them. Who departed from them with Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. Now stop for just a second. He said, "Let's go, glory to God, hallelujah." Now we're going to do this, and he said, well, I, "I'm going to get, I'm going to get Mark." And Paul said, "I don't think that's a good idea. I don't agree with that." And Barnabas said, "Well, I want to take him. I think he'd be good." Paul said, well, "I don't." Now watch this. Watch this. Verse thirty-nine. Christian people, watch this. And the contention was so sharp between them. To the apostles, filled with the Holy Ghost, out preaching the word of God, and they got so mad at each other that they departed asunder one from another, broke fellowship. They had a church split. And so Barnabas took Mark, and Paul chose Silas, and departed being recommended by the brethren under the grace of God. You know, some we, we picture these men like, they're all walking in the power of the Holy Ghost and never had a problem. They got in arguments and disagreements just like we do. They were people like us. Matter of fact, the Bible said Elijah was a man of like passions as we are. Somehow or another, we exalt these people to, to uh, almost godhood in the Bible and forget they're the same as we are. They, got, they disagreed so much. They say, well, I, I ain't going if he goes. Well, good, I don't care. You do whatever. It's self. He said, I'll go that way, you go this way. They got in an argument. Now, which one was right? I don't even know. I don't know which one was right. You hear me say it all the time. It ain't who's right. It's what's right. That sounds simple, but that'd solve your marriage problems. Everybody do it. If you got a problem, it ain't like I'm right, no, you're right. All right. No, what, what's the Bible say? Let's get down to the floor and do what the Bible says. And that, that's the way to fix your problem. Now, when you don't like somebody, I guess everybody in here has got somebody that you don't like. I hear it all the time. I've been pastoring a long, long time. I have, it's, it's, it's constantly uh, my mother-in-law. I cannot stand my mother. People say that, Brother Danny, me and her get along fine. But her mom, if she don't keep her nose out of our, you know, it's, it's a common thing. And it's the same way with the mother-in-law there. That girl he married ain't worth shooting. You know, nobody's good enough for your little daughter. Now, Lord's blessed me. I got a good mom-in-law, Miss B, sitting over there. Uh, we've never had a problem, never had a crossword. Thank God. Some of y'all can't say that. Some of y'all, deep down in your heart, cannot stand your mother-in-law. And she can't stand you. And it's true. It's true. I mean, that's a normal thing. Or it may 
sister-in-law or brother-in-law, or it may be it may be somebody that you work with. Brother Danny, there's this guy I work. I absolutely cannot stand him. And the more I'm around him, the more I can't stand him. Her, I, she just she just irks me. As that woman, me and her, I, I'm telling you, brother Danny. Uh, it, it's awful. I, I know I shouldn't feel like this. I just can't stand to be around her. I don't want to see her coming. I don't like her. I just don't like her. Period. Now, uh, it may be your neighbor. You just don't like them. Now, if there's somebody you don't like and you never have to see them but one or two times a year, that then it's no not that big of a deal. But when you have to see them all the time or you have to go to church together or you have to go to, uh, in the same family, uh, you're going to have to, you're going to have to Work on that a little bit. So I, I'm going to give you a little bit, little bit of advice here this evening, and maybe it'll help you. The prodigal son's brother, when he come home, his brother didn't, wouldn't even go to his party. Okay. If he's coming for Christmas, I ain't going to be there. Don't, you'd be surprised, families, that certain people in the family won't come because other people in the family is going to be there. That's a shame. It really is. Listen, I've been in funerals, brother, where they had called cops. I have. I was one right over yonder, not far from here. That funeral, that, that right there, and that, uh, the family's mad. If she comes up, you know, it's his ex-wife or a girlfriend or something. She comes, I'll smack her face and all that. And one time, uh, 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 the the director over there at the, funeral, at the graveside told me, he said, "Now, preacher, we might have a little trouble here." And I mean, the police are coming. Do you mind staying a little while? And I said, "That ain't my job, man. I'm here to preach the funeral. It's their job." So no, no, I'll see you later. I ain't getting in no. I ain't getting in no family feud. And I have been in them before. Now, if you don't, there's just some people you just don't like. Now, what are we going to do? Uh, we make excuses for the people we don't like. And automatically, I, I've been passing a long time. I hear it over and over and over and over and over. If there's a woman that you don't like, ladies, and she misses church, she's backslid. If it's a woman that you do like, yeah, well, bless her heart, she's got a lot on her. See, and that's the way we are. If she's pregnant and misses the service, bless her heart, she's having a hard time with that baby. If she don't come and you the one you don't like, well, they were no, I come when I was pregnant. Ain't nothing wrong with her. See, you we our mind automatically wants to put down somebody we don't like and uplift those those that do. Now, the Lord said, do unto others. You'd have them doing to you, obviously. We all know that. That's easy to preach and hard to practice. Uh, but um, uh, let me just give you a few little thoughts about that. Uh, one thing is a good idea is to get to know them. My mom told me, she said, you can learn to like anybody if you'll just learn their ways. I remember her saying that a, a lot of times. Obviously, there's some people that, that it's, just, it's impossible, you know, uh, that you know, if you can't, you can't. But you can learn to like somebody. I'll give you an example. We played basketball over here. These men been years ago. Um, we'd play at 6 o'clock in the morning, and a bunch of men, there's a few young guys that come up, mostly men in their 40s, uh, 30s and 40s and 50s. And we'd play over there. Uh, uh, they'd play Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'd go sometimes one time, maybe two times a week. And you play at 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock, you're done. You got your exercise in, you're good for the day. Feel good all day long to do that. And uh, uh, first time I done it, I thought, this is the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. I'd get up 5.30 in the morning and play basketball. But actually, it really helped. And it helped me, and I enjoyed it. And, uh, and I, you could stay busy all day and feel good about it. And there was a guy that played there that, honest to goodness, I couldn't stand. And it was just like he was always saying something smart. And always sitting on it. And sometimes when I'd go, I'd say, oh boy, he's not here today. In, in my heart. And then he'd walk in. I'd say, oh gosh. Now, yeah, I didn't want to be on his team because I didn't like him. I didn't want to be on the opposite team because I didn't want to. And, uh, in, you know, in basketball, you, when, you're, when you got the ball, it don't matter what happens. You, the, the defense calls the, the foul. I don't know if y'all don't play ball, I don't know what that means. Like, if I'm really, and somebody hits me, I don't say, foul. You know, that, that's a crybaby. You respect, you're supposed to respect each other enough. The defense say, okay, I fouled you. I always never do that. It, it was the other way around. 
if he thought he was foul, he'd say, foul. And if he did, if he fouled you, he wouldn't call it. And I let that eat at me and eat at me. And I said, God, can you stand me around that guy? And one day I got to feeling guilty about it. And I started thinking, ain't right. Lord, I can So I determined in my heart, I remember my mom saying that. She said, Danny, learn to know somebody. And so I made it a point when, when I'd see that guy, I'd say, how's it going? How's your family? Are you from around here? Live your whole life. And honest to goodness, little by little by little, I began to, you know, those, that resentment started going out of me. I mean, we always got in an argument out there one time. And I, I said something, he said something, and I said something, he said something. And I mean, I, I, I got competitiveness in me. Any athlete, an uh, athlete ain't worth a dime that ain't got competitive. You know, when you're out there, this is war, but we're ready to fight. That's what you're trying to do. People say, well, it don't matter if you win or lose. That, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's the whole reason of playing, the win, amen? amen. That's, people say, well, I don't play to win. I, just, I play to win. Listen, I, the, the school at New Manor years ago, they used to get mad at me. The teachers used to get mad at me. I'd go in there and I'd say, now, boys, win fair if you can. And they all knew what I mean, and we got a big life out of it. But, I mean, the competitiveness comes out of you. If, you, if, you got, if you're an athlete worth a dime, you start running push. You push back. You push back. You push back. And I've, I've seen them getting fights, fist fights, over a stupid ball game. We ain't even getting paid for that, you know. And uh, so I, little by little, I started liking the guy. And honest before the Lord, honest before the Lord, one day he asked me to pray for him. And then I was going home and I thought, ain't you something? Claim to be a preacher. You're a preacher, right? And here's a man needing prayer. He's probably lost going to hell. And you're out there mad at him because he's not as mature as you are. I said, you're right. Whoever's talking to me, you're right. I don't know if that's the Lord or the devil. Uh, but but uh, I, I said, I said, okay, okay. And then I started acting like an adult. And after that, we was good friends. We was good friends. I mean, we ain't going fishing together or nothing. But friends. And that resentment went out of me. So if there's somebody you don't like in this church, here's what you don't do. Here's what you don't do. When you see them coming, go this way. I just don't want to speak to her. That's what you should not do. Now, if you go eat somebody up after I preach this, they're going to know you didn't like them. So ease in on them a little bit. A little at a time. And, and spend some time with them. Find out what they're in. Do something nice for them. Do something nice for them. If somebody you don't like, do something nice for them. Have a conversation with them. The devil has probably exaggerated that in your head. The truth is, I, I, I have I have thought people were talking bad about me when they really wasn't. And if you're not careful, you'll imagine the thing. I'll give you an example. One time years ago, we supposed to took the choir somewhere and went singing. Long time. And I pushed it and I pushed it and I pushed it. We probably took a hundred people that night to go sing. Big revival meet. I mean, I mean, people got off work. I rounded up people, took that bus, risked people's lives, got 15 or 20 cars following the bus. And we, and I, we probably piled 100 people in there that night to sing. We was all ready. And I thought, Lord of God, can't wait to get up there. Hallelujah. And, sing and he never even called on us. And I, and I thought, I cannot believe him. I had hard feelings in my heart for that preacher. I brought 100 people 50 miles. And I, here's what I thought. I thought, oh, there was some of his preacher brethren there, and he was scared that they might not like it. Or, and, so, and, and I had hard feelings for him for a long time. And then I found myself in that same position here or wherever I, at New Manor, and I'd be there, and the same thing would happen. Somebody would come to sing, and it would just get to moving different, and the Lord took the service a different way, and somebody else, and then the preacher went along, and, and I didn't call on them. And I remember thinking, well, they ought to understand. And the Lord said, well, you ought to understand. I said, you're right, Lord. You're right. And what, what I was saying was, I didn't trust him to follow the Lord in that service. I didn't trust each other. I thought, he should have called on me. Now, I look back now and think, he was probably right by not calling on me. Because my attitude wasn't right. 
Anytime you get mad because you don't get called on, it's a sign God didn't want you to get called on. It really is. We're all in this together, people. We're supposed to be on the same team. We don't, there's no superstars here tonight. If you get to preach, good, great. If you get to sing, fine. If you don't, fine. We had a guy up that time that he, he, had, he got this song and somebody else sang that song and he got mad. He said, that's my song. I said, wait a minute, buddy. It ain't your song. Now, I understand. I understand. You shouldn't get up and sing a song somebody else just got through singing and make it like competition. That, that's not ethical. But he got real mad, and I tried to say, I said, look, buddy, this is not American Idol. If every one of us would have that attitude of, hey, preacher, look, you need, I had people do that Sunday school class. If I don't get the class that I want to, I'll just quit the church. You, know, that, that's a, you need to be in a nursery. You don't need to be teaching Sunday school. You need to be in a nursery. Our attitude should be like a volunteer army. Pastor, I'm here. If you need me, I'm ready to go. If not, just like preaching. I've been to churches where they're going to call on preachers, and I was ready to preach, and I didn't get called on. Like we're going to do this week. I had a little bit of resentment. And I thought, my attitude should be, look, if you need me, I'm ready. If you don't, I'm perfectly set here and pray for everybody else. Boy, you get a church people like that, you can get somewhere. You can get something done. Like Today, Carrie hurt my feelings. Today! Don't have to go far back in the past. I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked on that message this morning to try to show y'all what's going on in the Middle East. I had that little cartoon thing. I you wouldn't believe how hard it was to get that recorded and I got it all ready and everything. I preached my heart out, told about the Jews and the Palestinians and all that. And I thought, well, surely I, I helped somebody. We, we went to eat and, and she was talking about how good this other pastor. But, and then I thought, uh, the, Brother Danny, old man like you thought that, yeah. What about me? Duh. I just got to preaching on that. Now, I'm not mad at her or anything because, because I am mature enough now to understand that God did do a good job. She sent it to me and I was doing it. It was great, but I want to choke him. <laughs> See that? See how your flesh works? Ain't that how we are? Ain't that how we are? Come on, ain't that how we are? Yes, we are. I'm opening my heart up to you so that you'll say, you know, he's like me. We have to keep this old flesh down, boy. I thought, little hot, snotty little preacher. I worked my head off. She didn't say dog. Still ain't. There's about four people this morning. Said, Brother Danny, I appreciate that. That was good. And the rest of you, the heck with you. I, I'm just kidding. But see, that's how we are. We, some of you men, you're the same way. If your wife comes in and brags on another, you think, huh? I, I work too, you know. Don't, don't take everything like it's, a, like it's personal. Don't take everything. It, it'd be like this. If an, we're sitting out to eat and she'll say, boy, did you hear so-and-so? He's a good preacher. Here's the way some people go, oh, you're saying I'm not a good preacher? You know anybody like that? So that gone touchy, you can't open your mouth. They ever like if you if you say, uh, you look pretty today. Oh, you're saying I don't look pretty? No. Everything everybody says is not a criticism of you or me. But we're like that. We're like that. So a couple things. Beware of gossiping about it. If you don't know somebody, do not let yourself. Talk about them to other people. Man. Oh, we love to do that. What about us? Yeah, I don't mean to say nothing, but well, she needs it. You know, don't let yourself do it. Second, don't don't harbor it in. Don't harbor it in. Don't let it grow it's like cancer. It'll just get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Right, that that woman that you hate at work. Sometimes it's because you're jealous. Sometimes, a lot of times when women don't like other women, they're jealous of them or their kids or their husband or their house or their looks or something. And that's the hardest sin for you to admit is that you're jealous of somebody. That's hard to admit. But if you check your heart, you check your heart. Way, way, way deep inside. Some of y'all don't even know yourself. 
The older I get, the more I know old Danny. He ain't worth a dime. He ain't. He ain't sorry as a day is long. And you, it, when you, you, you mess up when you start justifying yourself. You're, you're, it's all you, and you're never wrong, and everybody's, everybody's out to get you, and, and you know you're, you're persecuted, and you're pitiful, and nobody appreciates you. The devil will tell you your family don't appreciate you. The devil will tell you your kids don't appreciate you. The devil will tell you your wife or husband don't appreciate you. Don't just, just don't. It, it don't matter. Uh, live for the Lord. Do right. God will bless you for it. You may have to work on it. Beware of justifying it. If I'm up here saying, don't, you don't like somebody, don't say, well, I'm right to not like that. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Now, I understand. I know what you're thinking. Try to put a positive spin on what they are saying. You understand what I mean? Uh, don't beware of just going by your own emotion. Another thing, pick your battles. Everything ain't worth fighting over. It's true. It's true. Most of the stuff we argue and bicker about, six months later, you can't even remember it, what it was. And you know why some churches can't have split and then have another split and then have another split? Just like what we've seen here tonight. They disagree about something. But boy, if we could get our, all of our eyes on the big picture and say, we're trying to get a job done for God right here in this town. And the devil's our enemy, not each other. The devil's our enemy. And all stick together and get to Ain't no telling. We all fight together. Ain't no telling what God's liable to do. Now, don't be on the defensive. Don't be so touchy. And don't, don't, don't take everything as a criticism about you. Like, you boys play the guitar and say, man, you've done a good job. Don't tell you like, well, he, he must think he's better or she's better. No, no. Just because somebody gets a compliment don't mean that's not a put down of you. Now, let me finish this and I'm done. Take your Bible now and turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. See, Acts happened here in about A.D. 50 or 50, somewhere along in there. 1 Corinthians in A.D. 58. And look what happened. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And for I only and Barnabas. Have we not power to forbear working? Galatians, 2 Timothy, Paul and Barnabas made things right with each other. At the ministry, old Barnabas was right there. Right there. They got back things right and worked together again. It's a disgrace that sinners out there in a bar in Asheville somewhere can get in a fight and bloody each other's face and a week later well, how you doing, old boy? Sorry about a little disagreement the other night. Yeah. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Sinners and Christians. Somebody gets our parking place. Oh, gosh. Oh, my! somebody bit my baby's ear in the nursery. I'll never speak to that woman. We're, we're the worst in the world to hold grudges. So there's my message for tonight. I don't know who it is, who it's for, but I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. Whoever that is or persons right now that you just absolutely can't stand, let's pray this prayer together. Lord, soften my heart toward so-and-so. Lord, help me to look for the good in them. Lord, they must have some good. Lord, they got this, they got that. Lord, help me to see the good and not dwell on it. It's, it's, it's hindering me. And Lord, help me to be nice. And help me to have no hard feelings toward nobody in this world. Help me to love you, love each other. Let's get learn to get along in our family, in our church, at our jobs, at school, whatever it might be, and be Christians about it. Be the bigger person. We we'll ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay. Now, uh, I quit early tonight. So I'm gonna talk here just a second before we go. Uh, uh, Brandon, you might want to if you want to make that. They told me that they want to make that announcement about the, the dinner. It's at, I'll do it for you. It's at the First Baptist Church in Valdez, y'all. Uh, we're coming up. Uh, and the basement part, they have a big fellowship hall. And that's what time? Six, six o'clock. Shame that man has to make his own birthday in the party announcements. But uh, anyway, 
that'll be on the fourth, and then on the uh, uh, we got a big weekend plan that week. And I always preach in Florida the week before that. I always have for 20, 20 years, and uh, we'll be talk, we'll be talking about that later. But anyway, uh, need some air mattresses. All the men and anybody else wants to come. If you're a lady, kids, you want to come tomorrow evening at seven.